Hello friends, as you know, a math man coming again for another fa fun math adventure. Unlike Superman, I cannot leap tall buildings in a single bound, and I'm not faster than a speeding bullet, but in regards to math, Superman got nothing on me. After watching this video, students will be able to solve radical equations. The concept we're looking at is radical equations, the skill we're looking at is solving radical equations, different varieties of those equations. So with no further ado, let's get into our lesson. So the first group of problem, we're solving simple radical equations. It says check your solution. Very important in this concept, we check solutions. We'll go over what that means. So the first problem, we have the square root of f equals 7. The inverse of square root is squared, so in order to get rid of square root, we square both sides. Uh, the left side gives you the variable we're solving for, f. 7 times 7 is 49, so f is 49. So that's a really simple uh, radical equation. So you check by writing the original equation, the square root of f equals 7. We substitute our value for 49 into f. And we check to make sure both sides of the equal sign will be the same. So the square root of 49 has to equal 7. That does equal 7, so we will write 7 equals 7. We circle that, that lets us know that the value of 49 is a correct and valid solution for f. So let's go to 2. We have a square root of a negative x equals 5. To get rid of a radical, we square both sides. We end up with negative x equals 5 squared, which is 25. To get rid of negative 1, we divide both sides by negative 1. x is going to equal negative 25. So again, like the first problem, we have to check our answer by substituting negative 25 into our equation. So we have negative x equals 5. We substitute negative 25 for x. So we basically have negative one times negative 25, which will give us a positive 25. So it'll be the square root of 25. That's negative one times negative 25 equals five, and the square root of five, 25 is five. They're both equal, so that negative 25 for x is a valid solution. Let's go to another group. Now we have a different problem. We have a radical on the left side of the equal sign and a radical on the right. So we, we put our variable on the left like we like to do. Uh, the square root of u is equal to 2 times the square root of 2. We square both sides to get u. Uh, we must square both the 2 and the square root of 2. That's the property of roots. And so when you square 2, that's 4. And you square the square root of 2, that's 2. So 4 times 2 is the value of u and u is equal to a. So again, like we did in the first two, we have to check it. We will write our original equation, square root of u equals two times the square root of two. We substitute eight for u. We got the square root of eight equals two times the square root of two. We can simplify eight because it has a perfect square factor, which is four. We change that to the square root of four times two. We take the square root of each of those factors, we will end up simplifying that to two times the square root of two, which is equal to two times the square root of two on the right. And so that checks out, and so u is equal to eight. So now we're gonna do number eight. And the square root of five a plus two equals zero. So again, we have to get rid of two. Since it's positive, we will subtract both sides by two to get the square root of five a by itself. That will equal negative 2 on the right. To get rid of radical, we will square both sides. By doing that, we will get 5a. 5a on the left will equal negative 2 squared, which is 4. We divide both sides by 5 to solve for a, and a is equal to 4 fifths. So now again, we have to check our solution. So we're going to write the original equation, and we will substitute 4 fifths for a. And so we will end up having uh, 5, the square root of 5, times 4 fifths. And we will take that square root of that, and we will add 2, and that has to equal 0. So when you multiply 5 times five, 4 fifths, you will factor out the 5, you get the square root of 4, 
plus two equals zero. Square root of four is equal to two. So you will have two plus two equals zero. Four does not equal zero, so A equals four fifths is not a valid solution. So this answer would be no solution for this particular problem because it does not check out. And that's the importance of checking your solution. So let's go to number 10. Square root of 3k minus 2 equals 4. To get rid of our radical, we square both sides. By doing that, we will get 3k minus 2 on the left side of the equal sign. 4 squared is equal to 16, because that's 4 times 4. We will use inverse operations to add 2 to both sides to get rid of negative 2. We will get 3k equals 18. We will divide both sides by 3 to solve for k and k is gonna equal six. So again, like we've been doing with the previous examples, we have to check our answer by substituting the value back in. So we write the original equation, square root of three k minus two equals four. We substitute six for k. We will have three times six minus two, that's all under the radical, equals four. Underneath the radical, we will simplify Three times six, which is 18, minus two equals four. 18 minus two is 16, so we take the square root of 16, that has to equal four. Square root of 16 is four, so that checks out. So k equals six is a valid solution. So let us now go to 12. Square root of four, x minus four, minus four equals zero. And to get rid of negative four first, by adding four to both sides, by doing that, we get the radical on the left side, the square root of 4x minus 4 is equal to 4. In order to get rid of radical, we must square both sides. When we do that, we get rid of radical, we'll have 4x minus 4 on the left side. That will equal 16. We will add 4 to both sides to get rid of negative 4 inverse. We'll get 4x equals 20. We'll divide both sides by 4 to solve for x and x will equal, what's that equal, y'all? Yeah. Five, correct, that equals five. So x is gonna equal five. So again, we have to check our solution. And we write our little check. We will write the original equation. So we're gonna four x minus four, minus four equals zero. We substitute five for x, so we're gonna have square root of four times five minus four under the radical minus four equals zero. Under the radical, we continue to simplify. We have the square root of 20 minus four, minus four equals zero. Then we'll simplify that. That will give us the square root of 16 minus four equals four. Square root of 16 is four. Four minus four is zero, which is equal to the right side. And so the solution checks out. And so x equals five is a valid solution. Now we're gonna to go to number 13. We have little fractions going on here. Square root of D over three is equal to four. We have to get rid of the three. The inverse of division is multiplication, so we multiply both sides by three. That allows us to eliminate the denominator, giving us the square root of D equals 12. We square both sides and get rid of the radical. And D is equal to 12 squared, which is equal to 144, 12 times 20. So now we gotta check that answer. We we'll write the check here. It's so important when you do radical equations to check your solutions as we've seen so far. So we write our original equation, square root of d over three equals four. We substitute 144 for d. So we have the square root of 144 over three equals four. Square root of 144 is 12, because 12 times 12 is 144. 12 over three is four, so the right side is four, so they check out, and 144 is a valid solution. Now we're gonna go 16. D is equal to the square root of 12 minus D. So again, we have to square both sides to get rid of our radical. Uh, that's what we're gonna do. We do that, the left side is going to equal d squared. The right side is going to, oh, we moved the term over so we can put, so the NOAA math man flips it around. So you get rid of radical, you got 12 minus d equals d squared. You have to add d to both sides. We have a quadratic, 
you want one side equal to zero and then you want to try to factor. So by moving the negative D and the 12 by inverse operation, you're left with a quadratic that says D squared plus D minus 12 equals zero. So now you attempt to factor since it's a quadratic, you can use what we call a diamond product, uh, diamond rule. You put the product on the top, which is negative 12, you put the sum on the bottom, which is one, Looking for two terms, the product is negative 12, and the sum is one, that will be four and negative three. That's four times negative three is negative 12, four minus three is one. So you break that into two quadratics, d plus four times d minus three, set equal to zero, use the zero product property, take each of those factors, set equal to zero, and solve for d. In the first one, you subtract four from both sides, d is equal to negative four. You take the other equation, d minus 3 equals 0. You add 3 to both sides because that's the inverse, and d is going to equal 3. So your two solutions are negative 4 and negative 3. Now you have to check it because we got two solutions, but one of them might not be valid. Both of them might not be valid, but they might both be valid. So we have to check. So we're going to write, the NOLA math man writes the two answers there. Get rid of our work for solving, and now we're going to need space to check. So we're going to start checking. So we write the original equation. We'll start with the first value, d equals negative 4. We will substitute that, substitute that into both values of d. You get negative 4 equals the square root of 12 minus negative 4. Uh, 12 minus negative 4 is basically 12 plus 4, which is equal to 16. So again, the left side is negative 14, I mean negative 4. The right side, you have to square root of 16, which uh, simplifies to 4. Since they're not equal, we know that D equals negative 4 is not a valid solution. So now we have to check the second solution, D equals 3. So again, we write the original equation. D equals the square root of 16 minus D. Uh, no, I said D is equal to the square root of 12 minus D, I'm sorry. So now you substitute 3 into both uh, these in the equation. You get 3 equals the square root of 12 minus 3. The square root of 12 minus 3 simplifies the square root of 9. The square root of 9 is 3. The left side is 3, so they equal. So D equals 3 is your solution for the whole part. So now we have another group. We're going to do one more example here. We're doing... The square root of 8 minus D equals D minus A. So again, we have to get rid of the radical by squaring both sides of the equal sign. When you square it's the square root of 8 minus D, you're left with 8 minus D. When you square D minus 8, that's binomials being multiplied. So normally you would use the box method to get the product of those two binomials. So that's what we're doing here. And so you label your box and it gives you four products d times d with d squared, d times negative 8, negative 8 d, d times negative 8, negative 8 d, negative 8 times negative 8, positive 64. So when you combine the like terms, the negative 8 d's, you're left with d squared minus 16 d plus 64. So now you have, you have a quadratic, so you want one side equal to 0. So you're going to add d to both sides and get rid of negative d. You're going to subtract 8 to both sides and get rid of negative 8 making the left side zero, the resulting polynomial will be d squared minus 15d plus 56. You can use the diamond method to solve it. Since the eight term is one, the product's gonna be 56. The sum is gonna be negative 15. You're looking for two terms whose product is positive 56, whose sum is negative 15. That's negative eight and negative seven. So now you write the two binomials that result from factoring. D minus eight times D minus seven. Now you have to zero, do the zero product properties to solve for your two values of D. So D minus eight equals zero, add D eight to both sides. D is equal to eight. You have D minus seven equals zero. You add seven to both sides and D is equal to seven. So we have two answers there that we have to check. We, we have both answers, but you know we have to plug it in and make sure they're a valid solution. So we write those at the top, we get rid of our work from before, and now we're gonna to start to check our solutions. So 
Uh, we write the original equation, square root of eight minus d equals d minus eight. We will start with the value of seven. We'll substitute seven in both values of d. Left, you will get square root of eight minus seven equals seven minus eight. Square root of eight minus seven simplifies to square root of one, which is equal to one. The right side is negative one, so that doesn't work. That's not a valid solution. So now we're gonna check the second solution, which is d equals eight. We write our equation like we did before, square root of eight minus d equals d minus eight. We substitute eight for both values of d. You'll get the square root of eight minus eight equals eight minus eight. Square root of eight minus eight is the square root of zero, which is simplifies to zero. Eight minus eight is zero, so both values are equal to zero on the left and the right. So that means d equals eight is a valid solution. So this again, oh, uh, we got one more problem, so I thought we were done. So we have the square root of five n plus four equals n plus two. So again, we're gonna square both sides to get rid of the radical. We end up getting on the left, five n plus four. We simplify this, you can kind of do this in your head. n times n is n squared, n times two is two n, n times two is two n, two times two is four, so you get four n. So now to get one side equal to zero, we have to subtract four on both sides and we have to subtract five n from both sides. The left now becomes zero. The resulting polynomial is n squared minus n and that's it because the four negative four factor out. So now you can factor using the greatest common factor. You factor n out, you have two factors, n times n minus one. You set each of them equal to zero. One of the values will be zero. When you set n minus one equal to zero and solve for n, one of the values will equal one. So you have two solutions, zero and one. So now you have to do like we've been doing. We have to plug it into the original equations and check to see if they're valid solutions. So we'll start with n equals zero. We write the uh, original equation. We substitute zero for both values of n. On the left side, you have five times zero plus four is a radical equals zero plus two. Five times zero is zero, so you have the square root basically of zero plus four, which is four. The square root of four is gonna equal two. So the right side is zero plus two, which is two. So both of them are equal. And so that means n equals zero is a valid solution. So we circle it. So now we have to check our second solution, which is n equals one. So we'll plug that in next. So here we go. We'll pop up here in a second. So we we'll do the check now. We write our original equation which is the square root of five n plus four equals n plus two. We'll set, substitute one into both values of n, and we'll have five times one plus four under the radical equals one plus two. Five times one is five, five plus four will simplify into the square root of nine. The square root of nine is equal to three. One plus two is equal to three, so n equals one is a valid solution. So this particular problem has two solutions to solve. So again, we are done. We've done a variety of different radical equation problems. And so we have solved the concept, uh, we have mastered the concept of solving radical equations. So until we meet again for another math adventure, this is the Nola Math Man signing off. Have a blessed and prosperous day.